Give praise to the Lord. Proclaim His name. Make known among the nation what He has done. Sing to Him. Sing praise to Him. Tell of all His wonderful acts. Glory in His holy name. Let the hearts of those who seek the Lord rejoice. Look to the Lord and His strength. Seek His face always. Together, everybody, worthy are you, our Lord and God, to receive glory and honor and power. We humble ourselves before you. Enable us to listen to your word. Speak, for your servants are listening. Our monthly verse for the month of January is found in the book of Matthew, chapter 5, verse 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. Again, Matthew 5, 16. In the same way, let your light shine before others that they may see your good deeds and glorify your Father in heaven. What and why we believe? How did God create man? God created man, male and female, in his own image, and he knowledge, righteousness, and holiness to rule over the other creatures. How did God create man? God created man, male and female, in his own image, and he knowledge, righteousness, and holiness to rule over the other creatures.
life such as mine and consider me worth every minute of time to rescue a sinner like me.
when the curtains close behind. There's no pretense. I'm on my knees. I will lay down my life for the love sacrifice you gave to me. It's all because of you. All because of you Church, you know, strength.
pray. Heavenly Father, we come to you this morning not just seeking answers, but seeking strength and courage for the days ahead. We pray for courage to be the people who you have called us to be, people who do justice and seek peace through your love for all of your people. We pray for humility and wisdom to become who you have called us to be, people united under your truth. We have become so divided, not just in politics, but so, but also when it comes to your word. Many look and listen to people around them. So many seem divided and at war with one another, either through words or worse, through guns and killing. But praise your name because despite our imperfections, your love is all-encompassing, never-ending, always forgiving. This is our hope that you love us unconditionally. Thank you. This morning, we lift up the families and friends who have lost loved ones. Give them strength and courage for the days ahead. Help us to find ways to not alienate people, but to bring them together. Enable us to be more like your son, whom you sent to show us how to live and respect others. We ask your blessing on all who are in authorities, the fathers, the mothers, the teachers and coaches, the grandfathers and uncles, our pastors and church leaders. Give them patience, understanding, and unconditional love for those they are leading. We also lift up those in our congregation who are sick or hurting in any way. Give them peace and strength to face their situations. Comfort those who are victims of violence. Give us courage to share to them the hope of our calling. Enable us to show them Christ through our speech, thoughts, and actions. Enable us to point them to a different path, a path of goodness and hope instead of bitterness and revenge. Use Pastor Neil as he share your precious words to us. Humble us and enable us to let your word do its cleansing work in our lives. Grow our spiritual lives and through us grow your church. All these things we ask in the name of your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord and treasure. Amen. Our sermon passage for this morning is found in the book of Colossians, chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior, but now He has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in His sight without blemish and free from accusation. If you continue in your faith, established and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Lesson, good morning to everyone. Welcome to UCC Sunday Worship. Have you ever wondered why there are so many religions out there in the world, and out of the many, many religions, you are believing in Christianity? Are you fully convinced that Christianity is truly the only way that you can experience a, a relationship with God the Father? I believe that many of you who are, who are here, who are part of UCC Church, you are here because somebody once shared the gospel to you. Or perhaps you heard the good news of the gospel of Jesus Christ and you trusted in Him as your Lord and Savior. But do you know whether you truly heard the right gospel? Today I want to share to you about a passage in scripture that speaks about this question. Did you hear the right gospel? There are so many cults out there, there are so many religions out there who all claim that their way is the only way, is the right way. How do you know whether you heard the right gospel? Today we shall look into Colossians Colossians chapter 1 verses 21 to 23 to see what is the true gospel, what is the core essence of the gospel. But before we move on, shall we come to the Lord in prayer. Heavenly Father, we thank you so much for giving us the gospel, for sending us your only begotten Son, the Lord Jesus Christ, that through him we might experience, Lord, eternal life and we could experience salvation from you. 
Thank you for the truth of your word. Thank you for calling us out of darkness into your wonderful light. Thank you for giving us an opportunity, Lord, to respond to the gospel. I pray that as we study your word, as we listen to your word, I pray that we would respond in accordingly. I pray that we would truly know what is the real essence of your word, what is the true gospel all about, what is the core of the gospel, and reevaluate re whether we, we really truly heard the right gospel or not. And if we have the true gospel, the right gospel, help us to share this gospel to other people. In Christ's name we pray. Amen and amen. Once again, good morning to everyone. Allow me to share to you the passage for this morning. Let me read to you from Colossians chapter 1. We only have three verses today, but we shall look into the core of the gospel from these three verses. In verse 21, the Word of God says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. In verse 22, But now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight, without blemish and free from accusation. Verse 23, If you continue in your faith, Establish and firm, and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel. This is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. I'd like to stress the very last sentence or the last part of Colossians chapter 1, verse 23. The Apostle Paul is explaining that this for the past few verses, from verses 21 all the way to verse 23, this is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven, and of which I, Paul, have become a servant. Indeed, the Apostle Paul has become the servant of the gospel. He is known to, have, to be the apostle to the Gentiles. He has spread the gospel all over the Roman Empire, and he has uh, brought the gospel to many parts, to different parts of the Roman Empire, so that they would hear the gospel. And he proclaims to every creature under heaven, that's his hope, that every person would hear the gospel. And so if he proclaimed this gospel, what is the core of this gospel that Paul has been proclaiming? And it will help us answer this question, did you hear the right gospel? Let's dwell into, let's look into Colossians chapter 1, beginning with verse 21. The core of the gospel in verse 21 of Colossians chapter 1, the Word of God says, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. You see, when you, before you heard the gospel, you have to realize that you have this alienation from God. You were enemies of God because of the kind of behavior that you live. If you live a life that is in against, is, that is against the, the uh, clear message of Scripture, the commandments of God, from His perspective, you are uh, committing evil behavior. You are a sinner uh, because you have disobeyed and dishonored uh, the commandments of the living God. And as a result, you are aliens, you are enemies of God. You see, when you look at your life before you trusted Christ as your Lord and Savior, before you trusted Christ, before you encountered Christ, what kind of life are you living? You were living a life that is alienated from God. You are so far away from God. You know, you don't want to do anything with God. Perhaps you may recognize that you're doing something that is, that is uh, not right in the eyes of God. In, in your mind, you know that you are doing something that is um, you know, evil in the sight of God, in your behavior. Here we could see that the first part or first core of the gospel, we could see here that because of your evil behavior, there is this separation between you and God. You see, the, the first core of the gospel, the first message of the gospel is that, number one, God rejects a rebellious sinner. God rejects a rebellious sinner. You see, if God prescribes something from Scripture, if God commands something in Scripture, 
and you deliberately disobey His command, you're considered to be a rebel. You know, today we look at so many people out there in this, in this world who are considered to be rebels. Perhaps they go up to the mountains and they, they reject anything that uh, this government is trying to, uh, to promote. They're against this government. They're called rebels. And, and in, in reality, we as well, uh, before God, the, way, the kind of life we live, uh, if we rebel against God, if we sin against God, if we dishonor Him and disobey Him, and could commit certain acts that is considered to be evil in the sight of God, um, the, the first uh, core of the gospel is it's a bad news. God rejects a rebellious sinner. The more you continue to live a life of a rebel, God continues to reject you. You are in a hopeless state, and you could not come near God because you are far away from God. You are alienated. You are separated from God. God rejects a rebellious sinner i remember when i uh you know before when i was still not a believer um, i belonged to a, a family where uh, we believe in uh, different religions my my mom used to be a devoted catholic and uh, i would sometimes uh, go with her uh, to the roman catholic church and uh, my aunt has taught me some ways to pray the catholic prayer and my grand, grandparents on the mother's side are, are uh, Buddhist. So there are moments that we would go to the Buddhist temple and we would, uh, uh, you know, bow down to, to our ancestors. And my, I remember my aunt, uh, you know, tell me, remind or, or uh, instruct me to bow down, bow on my knees before my great grandfather and, and pray to him, talk to him, and tell him what is in my heart. And uh, we, we burned this incense. And I also remember that uh, uh, my grandparents on the father's side were are Christians. And uh, my grandmother brought me to Sunday school in a Christian church. And so I, I uh, am exposed to many different religions. And I thought that I was a good boy because uh, I'm a very religious person. But um, uh, at home, I would uh, quarrel with my sister. I would disobey my parents. And uh, I remember in, in, in school, uh, there were instances that I would uh, commit cheating because I don't know the answer to the question. And uh, I would commit cheating and uh, I know that this is not right in the sight of God. So we could see here that God rejects a rebellious sinner. If you live a life that dishonors him, that rebels his commands, that deliberately disobeys what he prescribes from Scripture, God rejects you. But that doesn't end. Uh, the gospel doesn't end there. There's a second message. Uh, but before we move on to the second message, the Word of God says, put to death. In Colossians chapter 3, verses 5 to 6, put to death, therefore, whatever belongs to your earthly nature, sexual immorality, impurity, lust, evil desires, and greed, which is idolatry. Because of these the wrath of God is coming. You see, um, God is coming. The Lord Jesus Christ is coming back. And, and when He comes back, He brings with Him the wrath of God. Because God's wrath is against uh, you know, sin, against rebels. And here, these are certain sinful acts that we commit that, that uh, will bring about God's judgment, God's wrath upon the world that we live in. Uh, someday, God's judgment will come upon the sexually immoral people. You see, God did, that did not create uh, sex uh, as, uh, as, as bad per se. He created sex, it's good within the bounds of marriage. But if we uh, commit sex uh, before marriage or commit sexual relations outside of our uh, marriage vows or our marriage, uh, uh, you know, and we, we, we live in a world where even the, uh, uh, the basic uh, definition of marriage has been changed. Uh, from what God prescribed to be a, a, a marriage between a husband and wife, a man and a woman, uh, today there are, uh, you know, revisions of what marriage is all about. There is this sexual immorality that we live in our world. This is against God. This is totally against God. Uh, we live a life of impurity. Like, remember when you, um, when you want to drink uh, your water at home, you want to drink a pure water. And think about it, if you have a container... Uh, let's say one gallon and uh, 
out of nowhere, you just open the, the container and, and put one drop, one drop of uh, poison. Uh, it's already impure, totally impure. And uh, that's the kind of life we live. The Word of God says if you only commit one sin, if you disobey one command, it's like you break the whole, all of God's commands. You are a low breaker. You are impure in the eyes of God because of sin. Uh, lust. We commit lust. Uh, the Lord Jesus Christ said if you lust for someone in your heart, uh, then you've already committed adultery with her. Uh, we have evil desires. This is, again, once again, against uh, God. It's evil desires to, to commit uh, certain, uh, certain sins that, that you want uh, some of your uh, evil pleasures to be fulfilled. Uh, you know, the temptation per se is not sin, but if you uh, seek to fulfill and you, you fulfill the, the evil desires that you have, then you're committing sin. Uh, greed is one more uh, sin that brings the wrath of God because when you when you look at yourself as being selfish you only uh, seek to fulfill your own uh, wants and desires and you just you, you want to grab it all you, you, you know you, uh, you just are not satisfied with what you have but you just keep on you know the love of money is the root of all evil and and uh, the root of greed is because I I am the God of my life. I am the captain of my ship and I, I rule and reign in my life. And, and when you elevate yourself to be the God of your life, then that is idolatry. And all of these things is telling us that God's wrath is against um, evil behavior, evil deeds. Our evil deeds brings about a rejection of God. We are alienated. We are considered to be enemies of God because of our you know, evil behavior. So let's take a look at the, our passage once again, Colossians chapter 1, verse, verses 21 following. In verse 21, the Word of God said, Once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds because of your evil behavior. God rejects you because of your evil behavior. A rebellious sinner is rejected by God. But the word but uh, transitions. Uh, the statement from a negative standpoint from before uh, you ex encountered Christ to now when you encountered Christ you know from the perspective of the cross the Word of God says but now he has reconciled you by Christ's physical body through death to present you wholly in his sight without blemish and free from accusation in spite of the fact that you're considered to be enemies of God in spite the fact that you are alienated from God, in spite the fact that you are hopeless because uh, you have committed evil deeds and God's wrath is against the sins that you have committed, yet God loves you. The Word of God says, but God demonstrates His love for you in that while you were still sinners, Christ died for you. You know, Christ died for sinners. He loves sinners. He hates sin. God hates sin, but, but uh, God loves the sinner. He sent His only begotten Son, and when He became incarnate, uh, He became God, became man. Uh, in human form, uh, His physical body suffered death. He died on the cross of Calvary so that you and I can experience reconciliation with God. In spite of the fact that we are enemies of God, God reached out to us and granted us this opportunity to be reconciled with God. He rescued you from, from this kind of life, this, this, uh, this evil life that you live. And uh, we could see here that uh, number two, the second message of the gospel is that God rescues a repentant believer. Well, if you are, if you recognize that you are committing evil behavior before God, and if you admit that you are a sinner, and you repent and you turn away from your wicked ways and, and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, if you um, receive Him as your Lord, the Word of God says, then God will rescue you. God will reconcile you. Uh, it's not enough to believe in Him, but you have to repent. You have to turn away from your wicked ways. You have to be uh, totally uh, sorry that you have sinned against God and admit that you are a sinner and He will rescue you. I remember when I was... Uh, doing some campus work, campus ministry uh, a few decades ago in University of the Philippines and uh, I happened to pass by a, 
a, uh, a, a place called a tambayan or a group of students were gathered together and they were uh, they called themselves uh, Pilosopong Tasho. Uh, well it's a it's a uh, uh, it's a it's a figure from a uh, from Jose Rizal's, uh, uh writing about uh, uh, he, his, his name is Pilosopong Tasho and these are philosophy majors and they tried to argue with me you know about the gospel they said that if how come always God is correct you know and man is always wrong and uh, that's a very difficult question and uh, I said that if you are uh, inside a trap inside a building that there is a uh, there was an earthquake and you're trapped in inside uh, you need to be rescued you cannot save yourself uh, that's what God did he he uh, wants to rescue you from from the spot that you're in you are uh, totally evil from from his eyes but he wants to reach out uh, to you to rescue you but you need to repent uh, from your sins and trust in Jesus his uh, his death on the cross of Calvary for your sins so you move the gospel is pointing out that from from being a sinner you move to be become becoming a believer uh, the Word of God says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 21 for he has rescued us from the dominion of darkness and brought us into the kingdom of the son he loves in whom we have redemption the forgiveness of sins uh, here we could see that we are totally uh, um, you know hopeless but uh, it takes God uh, God's rescue to, to save us from the dominion of darkness uh, we are blinded in our minds uh, but the God of this age has a shine in our hearts so that we would believe and recognize Jesus to be the Lord of our lives that we would repent from our wicked ways and he has taken us out of the dominion of darkness and brought us to the kingdom of the Lord Jesus Christ whom he loves and we could see here that we, we as a result we were redeemed from our sins uh, we receive the forgiveness of our sins so here is the second core message of the gospel the Word of God says in Colossians chapter 1 verse 21 you use uh, um, I think this is in Colossians chapter 2 verses 7 to 8 you used to walk in this ways in the life you once lived but now you must also rid yourselves of all such things as these anger rage malice slander and filthy language from your lips so we could see here that we used to live a life that is evil before him in the life that we once lived um, you cannot uh, trust in Jesus Christ unless you turn away from a wicked life turn away from an evil life turn away from a rebellious life turn away from a uh, you know a sinful kind of life uh, you need to turn away from this and turn to God and trust in Jesus as your Lord and Savior but as you continue this Christian life as you are now a believer um, you could see here that uh, you would recognize that there is you are not perfect yet uh, he is in the process of transforming you one step at a time and you you realize that there are some anger issues in your life there is this some rage in your life and uh, uh, some malicious manners in your life you slander against people and you speak filthy language from your lips and, and God's Word says uh, you walk in this ways uh, but now that you walk in this ways which is in verses uh, the, the verses previous to, to verse 7 but in verse 8 the Word of God says you also must rid yourselves you must continually allow God to purify you and transform you inside out so we could see here let's go back to Colossians chapter 1 verses 21 to 22 we could see here that once you were alienated from God and were enemies in your minds uh, because of your evil behavior see this is your life before Christ you were rejected by God because of your evil behavior but but now he has reconciled you um, by Christ's physical body through death to present you holy in his sight without blemish and free from accusation so here we could see that God wants to move you from being evil to becoming holy you know the cross of Jesus Christ in the past you were evil he wants to transform you to become holy someday in his sight so we could see here the core message of the gospel is that if you continue in your faith established and firm and do not move from the hope held out in the gospel so we could see here that 
The Word of God says that God will one day present you holy, but you have to do something. You have to continue on in your faith. You know, um, the Lord Jesus Christ uh, spoke that there are four kinds of soil. Our faith is like a four kinds of soil. And, uh, um, you know, the first kind of soil is that they heard uh, the message, they received it with joy, but, uh, you know, it, it, it fell on rocky soil and uh, uh, it didn't have roots. And sooner or later, this faith withered. And another kind of faith is you, you, you heard God's word and you receive it with joy, but, uh, you know, there are these, uh, you know, uh, thorns, thorns in life that uh, the worries of this life, uh, the, the riches, worries of riches in this world, um, the wealth of this world uh, chokes you. And as a result, this faith withers as well. And the third kind of faith is uh, faith that you, you hear the gospel uh, but uh, it just it was just on on the on the sidewalk. It was a step over. It doesn't have roots as well. But the last kind of faith and the, the only kind of faith uh, is if this faith you know uh, was planted on good soil, then it will harvest. It will produce hundredfold of harvest. And the word of God says that uh, the gospel, the true essence of the gospel, is that if you truly believe in the gospel. And you continue in, in your faith, in your faith in the Lord Jesus Christ, then uh, you you will there will be transformation in your life. If you continue on your faith, you're established and firm, and you're not moved from the hope held out in the gospel. And this is a picture of a tree, and a tree that is deeply rooted uh, beneath uh, the ground, and you're established, and it's it's firmly rooted, and it's unmoved. Even if there is this storm, uh, storms in life that comes and uh, pushes off, and uh, and uh, even the strong wind that destroys so many of the trees on the side and so many of the homes and houses on the side, but you are immovable. This storm, this strong wind is trying to push you, but because you continue on your faith, you are resilient. It, it's you move back. You, you you move a little, but you're you're actually not moving because your your branches are moving uh, you're being pushed left and right but you continue on in the faith if you truly are firmly established in the gospel then uh, you will continue on in your faith and uh, you will be there will be transformation in your life this is the third part of the gospel and then the apostle Paul, the apostle paul said that uh, this third part is uh, as, as a result of you believing in the gospel, trusting in Jesus uh, as your Lord and Savior. And, and this gospel is the gospel that you heard and that has been proclaimed to every creature under heaven and of which Paul has become a servant of the gospel. Here we could see that God reforms a resilient disciple. God reforms a resilient disciple from living a life of evil deeds uh, you trusted in Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, and you continue on in the faith, you believe in Him, you continue to follow the Lord Jesus Christ, you continue to allow the Lordship of Christ to rule and reign your life. You are no longer just a believer, but you are a follower of Jesus Christ. You are a disciple of Jesus Christ. And here, God continues this reformation work. Uh, he who began the good work in you will complete it in the day of Christ Jesus. That's what the Word of God says. In Colossians chapter 2, verses 6 to 7, the Word of God says, So then, just as you receive Christ Jesus as Lord, continue to live in your lives, continue to live your lives in Him, rooted and built up in Him, strengthened in the faith as you were taught, and overflowing with thankfulness. You see, when you truly receive Jesus Christ as the Lord of your life, you make Him the Lord of your life, uh, you make Him the ruler of your life, and continue to live um, this uh, allowing Jesus to rule and reign in your life and here you are firmly rooted and you're built up in him you're strengthened in your faith it's like this immovable like your your faith becomes resilient in spite of all the uh, storms in life that comes your way you continue on uh, with Christ Jesus as Lord of your life and as you were taught you were overflowing with thankfulness in spite of all the difficulties in life that you face. So here, uh, we could see 
um, several life principles that we can learn uh, from uh, this passage. Uh, number one, the gospel without repentance is a mockery of the cross. The gospel without repentance is a mockery of the cross. Uh, you know, if you hear someone say, just trust in Jesus and all your problems will disappear, you know, he, he will, uh, you know, give you uh, everything that you want in life. He, he will bless you and you will feel all uh, this good feeling in your life. Uh, the gospel without repentance is actually a mockery of the cross. Well, what does the Word of God says? In Hebrews chapter 10, verses 26 to 27, If we deliberately keep on sinning after we have received the knowledge of the truth, no sacrifice for sins is left but only a fearful expectation of judgment and of raging fire that will consume the enemies of God. Well, you know, you and I know that uh, before we trusted in Jesus as our Lord and Savior, we used to live a, a life uh, of evil behavior. And uh, when we trusted in Jesus, when we repent from our sins uh, and trust in Him as our Lord and Savior, then we, be, we become a believer of Jesus Christ. But the more you become a Christian, uh, it's not just praying a prayer, it's not just trusting in Him uh, at one point in your life and abandoning your, your repentant life, uh, but you live a life of repentance. You continue to live a life of repentance. Here we could see that if you are consider yourself a believer, you, you believe in Jesus, but you don't live a life of repentance, and but you deliberately keep on sinning, and uh, you don't repent from your sins, it's like, uh, trusting in Him as your Savior, but not as your Lord. Um, here we could see that if you continue on sinning after you receive the knowledge of the truth, then you cannot bring Christ to die on the cross for your sins once again. Uh, but what, what would happen here is that you need to fear uh, God's judgment. Uh, His raging fire will consume the enemies of God. If you truly uh, trusted in Jesus, but without repenting from your sins, then you are making a mockery of the cross. Uh, when you live a, a life of unrepentance, uh, when you hear the gospel and, and believe without repenting from your sins, then you are making a mockery of the cross. The second life principle we can learn here is that the gospel without lordship is a worse path than sinners. Um, you know, if you trust in Jesus only as your Savior but not as your Lord, then you are uh, heading a path that is worse than a sinner. Uh, the Word of God says, If they have escaped the corruption of the world by knowing our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, and are again entangled in it, and are overcome, they are worse off at the end than they were at the beginning. Well, perhaps initially you trust in Jesus as your Savior, and uh, probably there is some uh, temporary changes in your life, but once again you get entangled and live a life of a rebel, you continue to live a life of, of sin and yet consider yourself a Christian, but in your life you're living out an unchristian way of life. And then the Word of God says the worst, uh, you know, you are worse off uh, at the end than you were at the beginning. Well, what, what were you at the beginning? At the beginning you were a sinner. And, and now uh, you are consider yourself a Christian, but you are living an unchristian life. And this unchristian life, that conduct that you live, uh, the Word of God says is worse than a sinner. You, you see, it's it's not about doing good works. It's not about uh, trying to gain your salvation. But if you truly trust in Christ, you have to trust Him as the Lord of your life. Make Him the Lord of your life. Let Him rule and reign from from uh, all these uh, uh, evil pleasures that you, you, uh, you're tempted to commit. Uh, instead, turn away from a wicked life and let Christ rule and reign in your life. If you truly make Him your Lord and Savior, then He is truly your Savior and He will save you from your sins. Um, the Word of God says in 2 Peter chapter 2, verse 21, it would have been better off for them not to have known the way of righteousness than to have known it and then to turn their backs on the sacred commandment that was passed on to them. Well, if you truly accepted the right gospel. Uh, you need to repent from your sins. Uh, not just repent from your sins, but uh, you need to trust in Jesus to be the Lord of your life and make Him the ruler of your life. Um, and, uh, and trust the, whole, your, the entire lordship of your life to, 
of your life to the Lord Jesus Christ. Unless you do so, um, you are heading to the wrong path. Uh, you are heading to a worse path than a sinner. Uh, the third life principle we can learn here from Colossians chapter, uh, uh, from Colossians chapter one verses, you know, twenty-one to twenty-three is that the gospel without proclamation is shameful disobedience to God. The gospel without proclamation is shameful disobedience to God. Um, the Word of God says, "If anyone is ashamed of me, the Lord Jesus Christ said." And my words in this adulterous and sinful generation, the Son of Man will be ashamed of them when he comes in his Father's glory with the holy angels. You see, uh, many Christians today, um, or several Christians today, are, are shy of sharing the gospel to other people because they're, they're shy uh, because they, they don't want to be rejected by men. Uh, but remember, we were rejected by God, but he rescued us. And so um, he was not ashamed to, to die on the cross for your sins and my sins. Therefore, when we truly trust him as our Lord, then we should not be ashamed of him. But uh, if we uh, do not proclaim, if we unproclaim the gospel, then we bring shame to God. And someday he will be ashamed of us as well. And the word of God says, the Apostle Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel, because it is the power of God that brings salvation to everyone who believes, first to the Jew, then to the Gentile. If you proclaim the gospel, you have nothing to be ashamed of the gospel because through the gospel, when you spread the gospel, when you share the gospel, you experience God's power. You, 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 you uh, are able to see the power of God to save someone who used to be an unbeliever, a sinner, and becomes a believer and eventually a follower of the Lord Jesus Christ, a disciple. Of the Lord Jesus Christ. Proclamation honors God. In Colossians chapter 4 verses 5 to 6, be wise in the way you act toward outsiders. Make the most of every opportunity. Let your conversation be always full of grace, seasoned with salt, so that you may know how to answer everyone. God wants you not to be ashamed of him but to proclaim him. And part of proclaiming the gospel is that in the way we act towards outsiders, we should be wise. Uh, we should take take every opportunity, you know, take make the most of every opportunity that God has given us to spread the gospel. And in our conversation with others, especially for those who are outside the faith, uh, who are still non-believers or uh, those who are still living a life of uh, rebellious sin, uh, our conversation with them should be all should always be full of grace, seasoned with salt. You know, we should be salt of the earth. And part of being salt of the earth is that um, we, we, we proclaim the gospel to people and we should know how to answer everyone and learn uh, ways uh, that you can proclaim the gospel to other people because proclamation honors God. So what are, what are the core message of the gospel? Uh, three things. Number one, God rejects a rebellious sinner. As you continue to live a rebellious life, God rejects you. But there is hope. God rescues a repentant believer. If you repent from your sins and turn away from your wicked ways and trust in Jesus to be your Lord and Savior, God rescues you. And if you continue to, to follow Him, to, to make Him the ruler of your life, uh, as you're the Lord of your life, and you become a resilient disciple, God reforms you. Uh, so from a sinner, you become a believer, and from a believer, you become a disciple. That's the core message of the Gospel. So did you hear the right gospel? Uh, perhaps today you heard a different form of the gospel. And I hope that uh, when you look back and heard the gospel, I hope that the gospel that you heard is, you know, the gospel uh, that, that God rejects a rebellious sinner. Uh, you used to live a life of rebellion. You sinned against God, but you trusted in Christ. You repent from your sins and trusted in Jesus to be your Lord and Savior. And you allow him to rule and reign in your life so that uh, in your day-to-day -day life you continue to reject what is uh, uh, you know uh, what is not right before the Lord and and allow Jesus to rule and reign in your life and let him let him be the Lord of your life and live a life of a being a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and if you truly you know ex experience a life from evil to becoming holy then you truly truly believe in the right gospel.
I remember a, an incident in my life when <clears throat> I consider myself a Christian. I graduated from a Christian school, and I entered into this uh, um, Catholic university. And in my very first year in college, I took engineering in college. And in the engineering school, I remember there is this particular subject that I find it difficult to, to pass, and I keep failing and flunking. And uh, I really didn't know. It's just a simple drawing, uh, you know, uh, in basic engineering drawing. And you need to see the, the, the side angle and uh, eventually come up with the third, the 3D angle. But I just don't know how to get it. I don't get it at all. And uh, one day the teacher gave an exam. And after distributing the exam paper, uh, he uh, incidentally, he surprisingly moved out of the room. So everybody, you know, beside me, I saw people uh, looking at one another's uh, sitmates paper and trying to uh, figure out how, wh what is the right answer. And, and all of a sudden, I was just beside someone who is uh, very good with this particular subject. And, and no, I knew I was a Christian, but I was tempted and I, I looked and cheated at his paper. And I kept copying and I keep copying and I was so focused on copying that out of nowhere, I noticed someone passed by me and he took my paper. It was the professor. And out of the many, many people who were caught, uh, uh, who, were, who were committing cheating or who were cheating, uh, guess who was caught? I was the only one who was caught. And he put a 0, 0.0 in my grade. And, and I went home and, and, and I uh, looked up to God and said, Lord Jesus, I, I know that I, I have uh, dishonored you, displeased you. I know that I am uh, doing something that is not right in your eyes. And so I repent from this uh, evil deed and I turn away from this evil deed and from this day onwards I want to let you rule and reign in my uh, academic life that uh, I am first and foremost a Christian uh, and secondly I'm a student here so I want you to and so um, I, I, I followed him to be uh, a disciple of the Lord Jesus Christ and let him rule and reign in my life and I remember after several years again there's this um, subject in engineering school that I once again find it so difficult to pass and it's like I keep on flunking and flunking and and uh, there is this uh, exam wherein once again the teacher gave exam questionnaires and uh, it's like a, a deja vu for me it's like uh, it's happening again and the teacher left uh, the classroom and uh, everybody left and right was looking at one another's uh, uh, paper and uh, I knew that uh, you know there's a possibility that I will fail, but as I remember my commitment to God that you are Lord of my life. I will let you rule and reign in my life, especially in this area. And uh, thank me, thank I'm thankful to God that I did not cheat at the time. And and I remember uh, we had this one last meeting with this professor, and uh, the professor saying that two of us are struggling the most with this particular subject, and he, he gave us. One last exam, just the two of us. And uh, he said that uh, this will determine whether you pass and fail. And I was praying to God saying, Lord, help me to pass. Uh, I, I, you know, I've done my part. I've studied hard, but I just don't know. I just want to entrust myself to you. And I took that exam and submitted to God. And I don't know what's going to happen. And thank me to God, uh, I passed. Uh, barely passed, just a passing mark. But that was the sweetest um, 1.0 or Back then, 4.0 in our school was the highest, and 1.0 was the passing mark. And I was so thankful that I passed that course. But <clears throat> did you hear the right gospel? If you truly believe in Jesus as your Lord and Savior, live a life of repentance. Live a life where He rule, let Him rule and reign in every area of your life. If you truly receive the right gospel, then there will be a life transformation in your life. It's a proof that you truly receive the right gospel if not you have this opportunity today i encourage you i challenge you if you have not repented from your life of sin um, today is an opportunity for you to repent the wrath of god is coming against his enemies and uh, you have to live a life of repentance secondly let jesus uh, not just be your savior but let him be the lord of your life uh, let him rule and reign in your life and he will transform your life every day live a life of repentance every day live a life uh, entrusting your yourself to him the rule rulership and reign 
uh, the, 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 let Him reign in your life day to day, then truly, you know, you receive the right gospel. Shall we come to the Lord in prayer? Heavenly Father, we just want to thank you so much for this wonderful message that you've given us in Colossians chapter 1, verses 21 to 23. Lord, perhaps uh, many of us, we've heard the gospel way, way back. And we could even remember that day that we trusted in Jesus. Lord, we don't know whether we heard the right gospel or not. But in our lives today, if we are living a life of sin and allowing uh, evil behavior to, to reign in our lives, then perhaps we did not truly receive the right gospel. And if we are, if not repented from our sins, if we have not made Jesus the Lord of our lives, I pray that today will be the day of salvation, that we will truly experience salvation and trust in Jesus to be our Lord and Savior. Thank you for how you're going to transform us. Many of us who heard the right gospel, I pray that we would, we would live it out. We would allow you to do, to do a reformation, that we would continue on in the faith and be rooted in the faith and believe uh, believe in the Lord Jesus Christ. Continue as we receive Him as our Lord of our life. Let Him reign and rule in our lives. Thank you, Father, for hearing our prayers. And we give you all praises, glory, and honor. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. If you are a regular member of UCC Church and you wish to give through bank deposit or bank transfer, here are our bank details. Kindly email deposit slip or transfer confirmation receipt to write to uccc at gmail.com. Let me repeat, write to uccc at gmail.com. Due to Pastor Billy's health condition, our online Bible study is cancelled until further notice. Thank you. Next week's speaker is Pastor Billy. We confess the mystery and wonder of God made flesh and rejoice in our great salvation through Jesus Christ our Lord. With the Father and the Holy Spirit, the Son created all things, sustains all things, and makes all things new. Truly God, He became truly man. Two natures in one person. He was born of the Virgin Mary and lived among us crucified, dead, and buried. He rose on the third day, ascended to heaven, and will come again in glory and judgment. For us, he kept the law, atoned for sin, and satisfied God's wrath. He took our filthy rags and gave us his righteous robe. He is our prophet, priest, and king. Building his church, interceding for us, and reigning over all things. Jesus Christ is Lord. We praise his holy name forever. Amen. Loving God, thank you for hearing us this morning. Thank you for encouraging us and feeding us with your word. And now go into the world as salt and light. Tell others about God's love. Do not be afraid and bring out the glory of the living and glorious hope that is in you through Jesus Christ our Lord. In Jesus' name, receive God's blessing. Amen and Amen. There is a candle in every soul Some brightly burning and some dark and cold And there is a spirit who brings a fire Ignites a candle and makes his home Carry your candle and run to the darkness Seek out the helpless, confused and torn And hold out your candle for all to see it Take your candle and go light your world. Take your candle and go light your world.
frustrated brother See how he's tried to Light his own candle Some other way See now your sister She's been robbed and lied to Still holds a candle without a flame So carry your candle And run to the darkness Seek out the lonely The tired and Whose hearts are blazing So let's raise our candles And light up the sky Praying to our Father In the name of Jesus Make us a beacon In darkest times Carry your candle Run to the dark the hopeless, deceived and poor, and hold out your candle for all to see, yeah. take your candle, go like your word, take your candle. Our worship service ends here. God bless everybody.